What's up guys and welcome to Chomp Down Reviews. Thank you for joining me on my first attempt at making a podcast. My friend Josh and I had a talk about the Boston bombing movie coming out starring Mark Wahlberg and just making movies too soon in general. It was a really interesting topic so without any further delay let's get into it. This is the Chomp Down. What's up? What's up? We are live. We're live? We're live. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Chompcast. The first ever Chompcast, an experimental podcast between me and one of my very good friends, Joshua. What's up? I just did a weird sound. No, that's okay. <laughs> I like the sound. Hello, Benjamin. I'm happy to finally be here. Yeah, it's, it's a long time coming. Yeah. Okay, so we are talking today about movies that come out way too soon. Um, we're, we were talking about the Mark Wahlberg movie coming out about the Boston bombing situation. Patriot's Day. Patriot's Day is the name. Yeah. That The thing about that, which is funny, like, I don't, it's filming now, obviously, so it'll probably come out next year. Mm-hmm. That's going to come out, like. I believe it's set for the end of this year. In end? December. Yeah, it's going to be. Oh, shit. Yeah, it's going to go by really quick. Um, th- I don't know why. So are they, is this, like, Oscar bait? Are they trying to make it Oscar bait? I haven't heard that it's supposed to be Oscar bait. Who's directing it? I don't know. Hold on, let me look it up. That's a really good idea. Patriot's Day. That's so funny. Because J.K. Simmons, J.K. Simmons is in it. He is. Yeah. Um, Both him and Mark Wahlberg are both playing cops. Yeah, the Watertown cops. Right? Watertown. I think J.K. Simmons is from Watertown, and I think Mark Wahlberg's from Newton. But I don't know that for sure. Um, I, I, know I mean, it has a pretty decent cast. Like that's that's a serious cast, but like, what are you doing? Realistically, like, I don't know. The thing that gets to me is that like, eventually, at some point, they're gonna have people in Boston like pretending to run away from bombs. That's reenacting. Well, like, <laughs> I don't know if you saw uh, the article, um, about how there's an open casting call for. I did see that. Yeah. It was on Facebook. Um, people were sharing it around. Um, some people I saw were really excited to be able to be in a Mark Wahlberg movie, oh, well, I mean, and then some people were just pissed <laughs> that they would even like. I, I think Mark Wahlberg has done enough movies here where Peter Berg, who um, Friday Night Lights. Oh. Um, okay. Oh, look Interesting. Up his IMBD right now. Um, Lone Survivor. Oh, that's right, Lone Survivor. So. So he's a frequent collaborator with. First Mark of all, Wahlberg. Battleship is not a good movie. No, it's <laughs> okay. Awful. <laughs> but it's basically like they're taking like the lone survivor situation and just moving it over to the Boston bombing. Yeah. Kind of area. He's that type of direct. I mean, he visually, I think he's. I haven't seen Lone Survivor, so I don't know about the vision. Well, he's done. He did two episodes of The Leftovers on HBO. Oh, I've heard that show's good. Interesting show. Huh. Yeah. Two episodes of Friday Night Lights, which... Have you ever watched Friday Night, watched Friday Night My Lights? little brother and I used to watch that. Yeah. The TV show? It was dope. It, like, I liked it. I'm not crazy about I'm football anyways, but... The first season. It, yeah. was yeah, it, was it was a pretty good show. Um, so, yeah, we wanted to talk about doing things too soon, but not, like, from a comedic, like, a joke too soon. Yeah, that's that, different. But, like, making... If you're doing, like, a, a joke about something, that's kind of different. Yeah. You're You're trying to offend almost mm-hmm. at a point. And there it's, like, that's the... But, like... When it comes out this December, it'll be three years, four, three and a half years. I think it'll be three and a half, yeah. Since the bombing. Yeah, because it'll be the third year anniversary this April. Yeah. So it'll be about three and a half. Um, yeah, it certainly is something when you're trying to make a movie about entertainment, like an entertaining movie. But, like, it's like. It's still so fresh in people's memories. It's like, very fresh. There's still things happening to this day. About that day. Yeah. And it just gets to the point, like, what's the point? Are you trying to make money because you know people will see it? Because people love to see explosions and dramatic stuff like that. Or are you trying to honor the people, the police? How many explosions can there be in that? There can be two. Well, people love, like... What's the excitement? I don't know what the excitement from this movie is going to be. Is it, like... People love movies about tragedy. They do love movies about tragedy. But, like, if you think about the tragedy, it's, like, two kids setting off bombs and then these two kids like hiding and like how much action based like like i i get that you could have a lot of like uh inner conflict with your characters Mm -hmm. and stuff but external conflict where are they really going to get that 
Because, like, I don't know from point A to point B, I don't know if a lot of people do what happened from the bombing to finding Zarnaev in the boat. Yeah, and that certainly can be very interesting and compelling. But, like, what did happen? Like, yeah. it's not like they had a bunch of gunfights and stuff. No, yeah, it was just a search. Yeah, so I don't know. Well, I think I just had a point in my head, and it's currently escaping me. Um, just grasp it. Trying to get it. It was about something. Oh, it'll come back to me. I think, like, so after 9 11, which I guess a close comparison a little bit, both the terrorists. You can compare them, but the scales are very different. Um, I mean, there's obviously World Trade Center, which is the Oliver Stone movie. Mm hmm. Um, is that the Nicolas Cage movie? Yes. See, and he plays a cop. I feel like you can't even find that movie if you tried to look for yeah. it. Yeah. And then there's United 93, which is about the plane. Ooh. Um, have you seen that movie? Uh, no. The thing, I mean, we're in that weird age where, like, those movies came out when we were, like, 9 and 10. Yeah, And definitely. so we weren't really going out to see those well, movies. How quickly did the World Trade Center movie come out afterwards? I think, I, like, It was, like, a year or two. 2003. Like, yeah? Huh. Fairly cert, Fairly close. I remember it was far too quick. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And obviously, you see movies. Movies about World War Two are made all the time. Oh, here's what I'm, I remember. Did you see Zero Dark Thirty? I didn't see Zero Dark Thirty. Now, that's obviously historical. Mm-hmm. Um, different type, but I can see where they're thinking like similar. Mm. Um, obviously, Zero Dark Thirty has the connections to um, 9/11. Mm-hmm. But do you think Zero? They got Osama bin Laden in 2011, and Zero Dark Thirty came out in 2000. In thirteen, mm-hmm. um, do you think that's too soon, well, or whatnot, or is it a different, too much different? The audience for Zero Dark Thirty isn't necessarily like. I think if you're basing like what's happening in the movie, like for Zero Dark Thirty, it's kind of more focused on them catching Osama, yeah. isn't it? So like, it's kind of two years from that, but it's like eleven years from nine yeah. eleven. So like that, and also Zero Dark Thirty was Oscar bait. Yeah, and it was it was Catherine Bigelow, who's a great director, mm-hmm. and Jessica Chastain, who's an incredible actress, and mm-hmm. she had a great performance. Yeah, and it was more about the struggle to find the uh, information, and it, it was like a detective movie in mm-hmm. a way. Um, but it still is based in that tragedy, mm-hmm. and so I'm just in, is it too soon? Well, I'm thinking like that movie's more targeted towards the audience of the victims of 9/11 rather than the audience of the victims of killing Osama bin Laden. Yeah. So like I feel like whereas it's aimed at the 9/11 victims like getting not them getting revenge but like mm-hmm. essentially watching that you would feel some sort of yeah. Like redemption. It's catharsis. Yeah. yeah. But that's like 11 years later rather than just two. Mm-hmm. So like if it was aimed at the people who knew Osama mm-hmm. and, like, they were going to watch it. But, like, I don't think those people would ever watch that movie. You know yeah. what I mean? Mm-hmm. And if they did, they'd have to, like, translate it. Like, yeah. that'd be a real issue. But, you know. But I just – it's definitely – uh movies based on tragedies are definitely a touchy subject. Yeah. But um, they can be good. Like, you have, like, the Titanic and stuff. Which, yeah. Like – that's undeniably a good movie, whether you like it or not. Yeah. It did well and financially. Schindler's and this is a great movie, and that's also yeah, more from very the, true. the perspective of honoring the heroes rather than like well, bringing up this the Mark tragedy. Wahlberg would movie will definitely be more about the heroes. Oh, absolutely, one hundred percent. Um, but Schindler's List was made fifty years, close to sixty years after yeah. the Holocaust. Um, very different game. Yeah, and also I don't know someone which we were going to bring up about Mark Wahlberg. Steven Spielberg is Jewish, but other than that, there's a large, like, distance from director and or, like, auteur mm, and subject. I see. And so in this conversation, we're considering Mark Wahlberg the auteur because it's being filmed – it's being branded as a Mark Wahlberg movie. Mark Wahlberg, obviously, is from South Boston, Dorchester. He's very connected um, to it. And so in this, he's the auteur. Um, there's a much closer um, – connection between the two than Spielberg and the Holocaust Mm -hmm. because Wahlberg was 20 years ago was living here he's definitely still he doesn't live here anymore but he's still family members here um and it's his hometown and it's where he's from he probably grew up going to the marathon and all that um so it definitely I guess if anyone could make a movie 
about it, I would, I'd want it to be someone from the area. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's the argument I've heard a lot is like if they are going to do this movie then it should be someone who's connected to the people. Mm-hmm. Um, th- that's why a lot of people are like giving this a pass because it's just like oh it's like Mark Wahlberg. We're yeah so and it's him. like he'll do it justice. Yeah, It's not like that. when he did Ted he portrayed Boston like a bad way or anything. Yeah. Like I mean there was a Quincy girl joke. But yeah well the Quincy girls love it. Yeah the Quincy girls do love it. <laughs> but I mean it's just like is it just because he's from here that it makes it okay for him to do it though like no it's an absolutely an interesting thing to consider yeah it really and is. i what's what are your thoughts on mark Wahlberg as like auteur mark Wahlberg, not like funky bunch like yeah see i have this horrible thing with mark Wahlberg where every time i think about him i just see him in that scene from um the happening we're just no yeah no we're, we're not i definitely like but, he's Autor definitely is not the correct word because Autor is definitely more of a director. Yeah. Um, he but definitely puts his ideas into his movies. Absolutely. Yeah. And he chooses things very carefully. For sure. Um, and so that's why it can be appropriate because they're definitely his touches. Like Entourage, he's the executive producer, but that mm-hmm. definitely has like a Mark Wahlberg influence. Oh, for obviously. sure. Um, the fighter definitely has a Mark Wahlberg mm-hmm. influence. Ted obviously has a Mark Wahlberg influence. <laughs> yeah. The Departed has a, probably a touch because he, he's still, which is a great movie. Mm-hmm. Um, but what do you think of him as, just as a creator, not an actor? Because you can, he's good. Well, he he's tries. great in He's great in some movies and he stinks in some yeah. movies. Yeah, as an actor, he's he's a little subpar. Yeah. Like, he definitely is good in, like, his action roles, though. Yeah. Which is what he's known for, mm-hmm. but... As, like, he's definitely not a bad actor. No, he's definitely not a bad yeah. actor. With good direction, Mark Wahlberg can be Like, The good. Fighter is great. Yeah, for sure. Um, the part of he's excellent. Yeah. Um, I think the Mark Wahlberg spin can really work for a movie. Like, absolutely. For sure. And it, it's been proven to work. And he's also one of those guys, um, this is kind of like Bill simmons but, like, you enjoy watching him. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. You, like... Um, like obviously he's a star, but like you feel comfortable watching a Mark Wahlberg movie. Yeah, it doesn't for sure. feel like a little weird. Yeah, he's a very comfortable actor. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. Like Agreed. Brad Pitt is an incredible actor, I think. But and he's a star, but it's not like one of those things like oh, Mark Brad Pitt movie, I can just sit back and relax. Hmm. I don't I f- think. I guess I feel that. Yeah. Do you think that's just because you feel more connected to him because he's from Boston? I mean, that, that obviously that definitely yeah. could be an influence. That could be. A um, thing. <laughs> but. I had somewhere to take it, but I kind of lost my train of thought. With the Brad Pitt thing, I started thinking about Brad Pitt. Oh boy. Yeah, Sorry, it's a you. terrible wormhole yeah. right there. Brad Pitt's a good man. He is a good man. Well, let me think. Did you see The Big Short? I didn't. I haven't seen he The Big Short it, yet. Yeah, it was great. Oh, man. I that's also, that that's, obviously it is not the, didn't destruction of the, like, the terror of the Boston Marathon. Mm-hmm. But... That a lot of good people lost a lot of money and like had their financial stability completely ruined mm-hmm. from that time period, from the housing market crash and yeah. all the big banks. So I don't want to brand it as a tragedy, but if you're just like from a from like a bird's eye view, mm-hmm. they're both like around the same from the same time period, mm-hmm. like the same world, the world in which the Boston Marathon bombing happened mm-hmm. is not too different from the world in which the housing market crashed. Mm-hmm. Like, it's the same technology, all that. Yeah, sure. Um, and it had an effect on people. It both had an effect on people, and it was both very recent. Mm. So, do you think... Is it appropriate to make a movie? And also, The Big Short had definitely had the political bias. Um and all that, and I don't think Patriot's Day will be because mm-hmm. there really is no reason for it to be. Um, that would be really uncomfortable. Yeah, it would be. Yeah. Um, but if it's okay to make the big short, and which was a comedy drama, but like a little lighthearted and mm-hmm. then hits you, where tons, and we're talking like hundreds of thousands of people, honest people, like financial stability, like lost houses, all that was destroyed. Mm-hmm. Why is it okay to make that? Hmm. But it's like not okay. It's a little sketchy to make Patriots Day, um, which was a terrorist attack. Yeah. 
Hmm. I mean, they're, they're not. I'm not trying to like yeah. make them. Yeah, I, I know what you're saying. Like, though. Yeah, I see how you're comparing them, but I mean, once again, with this, it's almost the same thing with um, Zero Dark Thirty. It's like your audience that you're trying to hit. Like with when you're watching the Big Short, you're watching the people who are perpetrating what's going on. Yeah. Rather than with the Patriots Day, which is going to be the people who are affected by it. Yeah, absolutely. So I think that's really like one of like the weirder parts about the Patriots Day is that. It's not going to be based on, like, it's it's only going to be based on the victims because mm-hmm. the people that, like, searched, that were a part of the manhunt, they were all technically victims of the Boston Absolutely, bombing because yeah. they're all going through the same fear that everyone mm-hmm. else is. And it's the, I, they're not going to catch the brothers. I doubt the brothers will be in it. Which brothers? The two, the people who did the bombing. <laughs> the Zarnaev brothers? Yeah. Do you think they'll cast them? In the movie? Yeah. <laughs> I'd say that's fairly unlikely. Um, one of them's uh, doing no, trial. I, no, I mean, not them. I mean, will they be characters? <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Um, um, see, that's, like, another weird thing. Like, are they just going to show them as, like, hooded figures that are never damasked? Yeah, like, giving a face to them. A big argument I hear, like, not exactly with the gun control argument, but, like, with the school shooting arguments and stuff, is, like, the more we see them on the news, the more it's, like, in our minds. We become... In- it's like, not that it's making kids go yeah. shoot up schools, but, but it's definitely not helping the situation. Desensitized. It, yeah, yeah, definitely desensitized. But, like, this is kind of like the same situation, but with, like, such, like, a... Like, it's not like terrorist a- attacks happen often, mm-hmm. but, like, damn, having a movie about it, like, clear as day right there, just so soon is so crazy. Yeah. And I think, like, going back to what we first brought up, the whole... Uh, I s- I saw, and I know you did, people, like, sharing the Boston Globe article about yeah. Mark Wahlberg needs you for this movie. Let's make him proud and all that. Let's make this a great movie. And, and stuff. like, But, yeah. like, yeah, let's make it a great movie. Let's have pride in our city and all that. But it's, like, you're going to be dressed, like, in Red so- a Red Sox hat, and you're going to have to look scared when you hear. Yeah. Like, that does feel a little weird. That feels really weird. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, damn. I mean, we do not know how it's going to be shot. We don't know what the script looks like, mm. all that. But it it feels a little sketchy yeah if i were home i would totally like audition for it or whatever uh, like just to be an extra just to just to see yeah. what it's like hmm. um just to s- not to see what the making of the film is like because i know that but like just to see what direction they're going in. i feel that it just feels very strange to be acting like you're running away from bombs in the same place where like people's family members were literally running away from yeah, bombs exactly it's so strange Now, I just saw, like, London Has Fallen, Mm -hmm. and that movie was really the first Fallen movie, if that's what we're going to call that series. The Fallen franchise. The Fallen franchise. Do you think, though, like, did they... That's stupid. I haven't seen any of the movies. So was Olympus Has Fallen set up for a sequel? No. Okay. (laughs) First off and foremost, Olympus Has Fallen should not have had a sequel. Yeah. (laughs) Because the thought of the same guy protecting the president in the same sort of situations is so ridiculous. Yeah. It's kind of like a diehard situation, which is what they were supposed to be. Yeah. Like having John McClane go through the same situation. Now, do you think they'll make a sequel? I mean, I don't know how well. Yes. (laughs) But did it do well? Did it make enough money? Yeah. It's really a financial thing, but it it was set up so they could. London is like... (laughs) Hong Kong Europe has fallen. Is fallen. Yeah, something like a country. Like he's visiting again, and people try and kill him. Whole continent. I, don't I know. would write. Never mind. Never mind. <laughs> no, this is because I don't want to. Like, never mind. No, fair enough. Fair enough. Um, <laughs> but they went from Olympus has fallen. The the people who were attacking the White House were North Koreans, which were like a pretty. Like North Koreans were pretty heavy on our mind at that point. I think that was yeah. before the interview came out, but it was still when like. Yeah. Kim Jong Un was coming to power, mm-hmm. and they were they're they're always testing stuff. But they switched it to people in the Middle East, mm-hmm. and like the decisions they made were so weird. But like, is it weird for movies to be making? Is it weird for people to be making movies where terrorists are the bad guys now? If we're like saying that like the Watertown movies too soon, do you think that like terrorists being like the enemy is kind of on the same grounds? Can you rephrase that? Yeah. I'm um, just, um, like, do you think it's, like, risque, I guess, for movies to have, like, 
people who are bad guys in real life right now, like terrorists, that like could easily come over and have a terrorist attack, and making a movie about a terrorist attack happen. Do you think that's like on the same grounds as the Watertown movie, or do you think it'll be like it's very different because one's a hypothetical situation and one's a real situation that happened? I mean, I think there's definitely the connection. Yeah, it still feels weird to me. Is why there's I ask. always like there's always been fiction based off of the world we currently live True. in. True. Um, like I'm sure in the seventies there were. I mean, not as much movies, but novels about the Vietnam War and all that. Oh hell yeah. Um. And there's always I mean, there's always been entertainment mm. and media that's been created that reflects the world in which it is created in. And it should be. And it, yeah, reflective. absolutely, because um, art is a reflection of not calling London as well an art, um, <laughs> but art is a reflection <laughs> of the world, mm-hmm. uh, and that's what makes art a necessity mm-hmm. to the world. Um, so I don't think it's wrong, but when I think it can be wrong, and I think if it's, like, I don't want to bring in Donald Trump, but, like, if you're making it where it's propaganda-like, yeah. um, then I think there is an issue. Yeah, it's because definitely... Because propaganda, the propaganda exists, all, everyone does propaganda. Um, have you ever seen that movie, like, Acts of Valor or whatever? Mm. It was like the movie yeah, that a long time was ago, created by Marines, like all the actors in the war Marines. Oh, it was no, like I a well shot one. movie. Um, it was definitely propaganda, I guess. Mm. Um, you can. I don't know if you saw American Sniper. Yeah, I was just gonna. Um, bring that up. I don't know if that was that was propaganda. That was a propaganda movie. Um, I think <laughs> it did feel a little like um, the movie at the end of Inglorious Bastards. D- yeah, that's Nations, what it felt whatever. like the whole time um, for me. <laughs> That comparison, the fact that that exists, is so yeah, strange. Yeah, but me. if you're making if you, the only movie, like only movies like that that are being made are about a certain group of people, mm-hmm. a certain race, I th- I th- take issue with that because it, what is it to, when it's being consumed by such a large audience? What are people going to take away from that? Yeah, people who can't. Um, and I'm not saying everyone can or can doesn't, but the people who can't separate the two, like this is a movie and this is real life. Mm-hmm. And just because things like that do happen in real life with a similar group of people doesn't mean all of everyone's like that. I think that can be problematic. Um, I mean, there definitely is a place because it is realistic. Yeah, You know what I mean? And if art is imitating life and art is a reflection of the world we're living in, then there's no way around it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But it definitely can feel lazy too. Yeah, lazy is definitely a word yeah. that you can use. But almost like advantage, like taking advantage of the situation. And like as far as like the interview definitely is a, I haven't seen the interview. Hmm. But. Now that would be an interesting thing to bring up in this because it's not like the interview is trying to play on any of your like real emotions yeah. other than just humor. Um, but that is about something that's extremely relevant and like that like it's not like that's a disaster no it kind of is a disaster in the way that the, like the world works yeah how north korea is and also the reaction to it was unlike oh my god that was a crazy i mean there are people <laughs> there were like threats and there are a lot of i mean, it wasn't shown in theaters mm-hmm. it went straight to netflix or whatever mm-hmm. because like a lot of theaters were like we're not showing it we don't want if you there's a threat out that, yeah, yeah we're not risking that um and so that's the thing where it does have an actual effect. Mm. Um, and now I don't want to bring in the whole censorship. Like, should it have been censored? Should you live in fear? All yeah. That, whatever, but... Well, I mean, I I'm I think, sh- in general, censorship's, like, pretty bad. Yeah. And I would never want to, like, censor a movie for making... A, like, if there was, like, a really inspired story that came out... Like, the other thing I wanted to bring up was that Jake Gyllenhaal's making a Boston bombing movie too. Oh, is he? He is. Um, Shit. it's actually already started I really, production. Really, I really like Jake Gyllenhaal. I think he's an incredible actor. Jake Gyllenhaal is one hell of an actor, but yeah. he's playing the um. I don't remember the guy's name, and I don't want to just like throw it out there. But what the focus of his movie is is the guy who's lost his legs. Um, a lot of those pictures went around of yeah. him in the wheelchair g- getting I'm rushed off. Real, it's about him and his uh, wife and the stuff that they went through. 
and that's like a completely different like, is it like spin. A, a, like a romance or um, I think it's more of like I don't know what it's. it's focus is i don't know if it's more of a character study than it is a romance or mm -hmm. i know the focus of it is really like their th their relationship and how it is changed it's called stronger stronger yeah um gyllenhaal signed on to star as bombing survivor jeff Bowman, who lost both legs in the 2013 attack um uh, you're a little too away from the mic no that's okay um it's based off the book by jeff Bowman. Oh, um, it's off of his own book. Yeah, it's, Interesting. Uh, it's more. And it's directed by the guy who directed Nightcrawler. Oh, is, crap. Yeah, which I hmm. love Nightcrawler. I'm seeing like a lot of directors just like carry over main actors recently. Yeah, there's definitely like... Um, there's a lot of that going around. Well, that's uh, definitely been a thing. For sure. Um, it's almost like... what's. Not the word like what Uma Thurman was to um uh, her uh, Quentin Tarantino, Tarantino's yeah. muse yeah muse yeah like you can make the case that um Michael B Jordan is Ryan Coogler's muse for sure um where they just enjoy and there's something about the director or the actor like the actor gives the director something yeah you know, there's some sort of connection that inspires which is definitely you can definitely see it in the movie oh yeah like, and it makes for, I mean you want to make people you want to create with people you enjoy sure. being around and also people who fulfill you creatively mm. um. So yeah, that's really interesting. Um, I haven't read the book, so I don't know what it's like. Hmm. But I, I mean, it definitely either. it'll definitely be like uplifting. Yeah, well, um, that I'm sure that movie's gonna be really depressing too. At the same time, yeah, Damn, I can't even imagine. But now, how different is that from the Mark Wahlberg movie in terms of subject matter, though? Like, my first thought when I heard that was not like I wasn't really thinking that too much about the story of what it would have but more yeah. like could you i'm trying to think of how to phrase this you could make the same sort of movie about the same situation from like a hypothetical disaster was my first thought when i heard it so like a movie inspired by the boston Marathon no movie? no no i mean like you could have what's it called stronger yeah. You could have like a carbon copy of Stronger about any other disaster and have it be like a similar story. Um, but I didn't know it was based off of his book at the time. Yeah. I didn't realize that this was like something this guy already had written down. So that kind of really changes it. The fact that it's based on the victim's retelling of the story. Hmm. Interesting. And that's definitely a different angle and a different perspective. 100%. Which is definitely, as you said, interesting. Mm. Um very interesting. Well, it's not like we could stop these movies from coming out. It's yeah. not like I, w I wouldn't stop them from coming out mm -hmm. because I'm not going to stop anyone's dreams of art yeah. that they're putting out in the world to stop. But um, it's just I hope that they treat it delicately, Absolutely. especially with the Patriots Day one, because I feel like the Patriots Day more than the Jake Gyllenhaal one. Uh, Definitely. Could, yeah, absolutely. Could ruffle some feathers. Um, but then again, you have Mark Wahlberg there and that's done with the trust this reassuring and yeah like on your back like hey i'm from here okay. i'm gonna <laughs> i'm gonna do this okay um what else do you want to talk interesting about interesting stuff well we're almost at a half hour if you want to wrap it up yeah now. we can wrap it up half an hour seems like a pretty good yeah place to stop for that went by fast yeah for real well thanks for watching thank uh, you josh everybody i'm nice sure he'll be back you. someday yeah, soon i definitely will be all right well Bye. thank you josh thank well if you made it this far thank you so much for watching our first ever chomp down and you win a trip to Mars, I don't know, I, I, I can't give you that much, but hey, thank you so much. Like and subscribe to make sure you can get notifications every time I post something. I'm hoping to do Chompcasts every now and then on top of the videos that I normally do, so I hope to see you guys very soon. Thanks for joining the Chomp Down, and I'll see you later. Goodbye. <laughs>